Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. It's a Friday as we uh, go into a weekend and we are staring uh, nor'easter or nor'easter-like conditions in, in the face here as we uh, take a look at the new GFS model and uh, we're now uh, into uh, Sunday morning. Now I, I want to just say at this point, you know, the main emphasis I think is going to be certainly for this, the area from New Jersey to southern New England is going to be the rain and the wind. Um, whether there's a, some sleep mixed in someplace or some wet snow, I, I think it's really not going to be um, uh, of importance. I think the biggest importance right now is going to be the wind, uh, the, uh, the rain, uh, which to a large extent is beneficial, and uh, the uh, issue of coastal flooding. And we're going to address all that. But here's the GFS into Sunday evening with rain on the doorstep of New York City. And you can see there's a deep low. Uh, down in uh, what northwestern South Carolina, you've got this high that's pressing down to the from the north. So you have a very very tight pressure gradient developing between the very low pressures here and the higher pressures up in eastern Canada. So that that creates a strong fetch from off the ocean, and uh, that uh, wind is going to be a big problem here on uh, Monday, and then eventually also moving its way up uh, into coastal New England from Cape Cod northward, but. Uh, the model is is lifting the low up actually almost straight north uh, into West Virginia, uh, and it's right in here. This is Sunday, Monday morning where you have basically the high hasn't moved through all of this, so you suddenly have you know moved the low up further northeast. You've tightened that pressure gradient even further. You can see how close the isobars are, the lines of equal pressure between the high and the low. So. Um, when we show you the wind uh, forecast, you're going to see uh, that it does produce some pretty strong winds. Now, it takes the low into northeastern West Virginia, kind of starts to stretch it out a bit. It's a little further north than what I would have thought it would be, but this is uh, such as it is. And you'll notice, by the way, that because of that, uh, most of whatever wet snow and sleet that the, that's being generated now is way up into upstate New York and in interior New England. Now, this might be a little overdone in terms of how far north it is. Um, I'm thinking elevated areas might do fairly well, at least down to I-90, but we'll see. And in the meantime, uh, there's that low. This is Tuesday morning as it starts to move away to the northeast. You have it centered over Montauk by Tuesday afternoon, and then it's out to the east from there. So uh, it's going to be a good, solid shot of rain beginning Monday night. The rain will continue into early Tuesday morning. Probably still be some lingering rain or showers around Tuesday afternoon. The strongest winds from southern New Jersey to southern New England will be starting up Sunday night and lasting into Monday evening. And then those strong winds shift into uh, north from Cape Cod uh, on up through coastal Maine Monday night into Tuesday. So everything seems to be moving on schedule. Let me show you what the uh, two meter wind, uh, the, the uh, 10 meter wind is, because this is pretty significant. And here is it at the point now where we have the low center. Uh, this is Monday morning, 1 a.m. And you're starting to see these are sustained winds. And the yellows are basically 28 to 34 miles an hour. So we we're talking about gale force winds uh, along and just off the and, and off the coast. And then notice as we go into Monday morning, you start to get into the 40 to 50 knot wind uh, field starts to show up here in the darker and uh, the oranges and reds along the New Jersey shore, the south shore of Long Island, over the east end of Long Island into Monday afternoon. And then those winds start to subside in southern areas Monday evening, but they remain very strong from the north central New Jersey coast northward through Long Island. And now you start to see those strong winds. These, again, are sustained winds. So if we're running sustained anywhere from 35 to 50, you could bet, you, you can probably bet that there are going to be gusts in the 60, even 60, 70 mile an hour range uh, offshore. And I wouldn't be surprised to see 50 mile an hour wind gusts up and down the coastline, uh, you know, just inland from the beaches, uh, up and down New Jersey and in through southern New England. And then Monday night into Tuesday, that big wind field shifts up to Cape Cod into coastal New Hampshire and Maine. And then after that, as the storm weakens and lifts up to the northeast, it's done and it's all over with. Now, in terms of rainfall, let's look at what the models are generating in terms of rainfall here. And it's Pretty generous. We're talking two inches, two to 
four inches of rain across much of New Jersey and eastern Pennsylvania and every bit of an inch and a half to two and a half inches of rain of long, over Long Island. This is going to be a little bit more difficult in terms of trying to figure out specifics. I would say uh, anywhere from southern New England uh, into northern Maryland and northern Delaware, there could every, be every bit of two to as much as maybe three or four inches in some places, uh, depending on who gets into some of the heavier rain bands. So that at least is according to the world in the GFS model. And when we look at the snowfall, you can see that shift north uh, pushes snow amounts um, way up uh, to the north, up into the you know, Catskills. And, and, and again, this is all going to be elevation driven uh, through Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire into Maine and also through upstate New York. Now, I'm going to switch to the NAM model because its view is a little different to some degree. First off, in terms of the snow, I don't know why it generates uh, as much snow as it does even into the northern parts of New Jersey and in almost all of Pennsylvania getting snow out of this. Now, I, I don't know. I, I kind of think that that's a little bit suspect at this point, but you know, the problem is it's the magnitude of the cold air to the north. It really isn't there. But I think it's because the uh, upper air system is 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 very cold and dynamic on the NAM and where it tracks it that it starts to generate all these high elevation snows uh, on the northern side but again the most important thing with regards to our area is the um, the wind and the coastal flooding and by the way if you look at where the lows are on the NAM the NAM is a little further south and I think that's also a, a key difference here with the the NAM low in southeastern Virginia whereas the uh, GFS low is northwest of that by about 150 miles uh, into uh, uh, northeastern West Virginia so that 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 difference um, it makes it, it makes a huge change in terms of what to expect here the, the NAM has a more extensive view of, of snow and sleet from uh, interior New England and upstate New York into central Pennsylvania so I think you know we have to watch that part of the equation I suppose but when we look at the NAM's view with regards to the wind it's the and by the way the, the NAM does not go out far enough it only takes us out into Monday evening but you can see where what it does with the surface low uh, it has a primary low that's sitting near Louisville which has been kind of doing that all along and then you have a stretch out here into the Carolinas and there you have uh, a fairly intense surface low that that forms it's a little more intense than what the GFS has and it swings it into southern Virginia and just kind of sits it there probably right underneath the upper air storm and when we look at the wind field on the NAM same idea as the GFS although I think it extends it a little bit further to the south but again during the day Monday it's every bit of 35 to 50 knots from along the New Jersey coast and the south shore of Long Island and then it starts to swing uh, north and east from there as the low makes its way eastward one of the things that, uh, with regards to the now i think would be if we went beyond the 84 hour period is the extent of the rainfall would probably be a bit more widespread we only have here again through monday evening in terms of rain and it's actually not that different from the gfs for the whole event uh, but but the track being a little further south i would suspect that you're going to see a lot of these Two inch plus rain areas expand, you know, over time, over uh, Monday night and Tuesday into southern New England and northern New England and beyond. So uh, we're going to hope that we get that amount because I think that really does a good job in terms of uh, making a, a, a serious de debt in the drought and actually taking a meaningful cut out of the deficit, which in some places is still running on the order of uh, 10 to 12 inches. I want to show you the upper air on this. You know, this is a pretty uh, uh, kind of classic look in terms of the structure of the upper air. And, and, and the NAM model has a very well-defined upper air, a very intense upper air deep storm that it moves almost east or east-northeast. And that could where the difference may lie with the GFS. But here it is just sitting here underneath this upper ridge that's built around to the north of it. So it's, all, it's, it's sort of getting shoved uh, underneath it. Whereas if we look at the GFS model at the upper air, the structure is a little different. The GFS kind of dips it initially a little further south than the NAM and then starts to lift it north, northeastward, and then northward from there. So that, that, that is a different view 
um, in, in terms of how this whole thing evolves, because if you look at the NAM, it might want to take this bodily out to the northeast, where the GFS kind of splits it a little bit. Part of it goes north, and then you get a new little upper air low center that forms right in here, east of Long Island, and this is for this is where uh, this is for Tuesday night, and then out it goes, and then we start to look forward to the changes uh, that come after that. Let's um, take a look at the uh, storm surge model for non-tropical storms because I think this is important to focus on. I've moved this up to as far as it goes, which is Monday evening, 7 o'clock. And uh, this model is forecasting tides to run 2 to 3 feet above normal from the central part of the Delmarva Peninsula, north northeastward, all of New Jersey, Delaware Bay, uh, in the uh, shade of red here that indicates two to three, a, a two to three foot surge, and over toward eastern Long Island and into Long Island Sound. Uh, then you have um, the, the, I'm sorry, this is the two to three foot. And then you have this little narrow band of three to four feet being forecasted from just north of Atlantic City to uh, just to about Sandy Hook and then into the bays of, of New York Harbor near Staten Island and in New York City. I think the big plus here is the fact that uh, we have um, a, a new moon a week from today. So we are kind of coming off a, a, a low tide cycle, uh, which is a big plus. We're not going into a full moon. We're not going into a new moon this weekend. If we were, then this could, would be a, a, a much more severe looking uh, tidal situation um, with regards to this, this particular storm. Now, we don't have out far enough. I will go back to the prior run of the GFS and quickly do a long range. I did do a separate video yesterday, but I can't really do it today because I don't have the time. Um, here we go. So as far as the, pa the, the, the continued process that we're under, that's, that's still going on. There are two things that I want to watch out for here is that there is room for something to happen, I think, as long around the end of the month. The last night's uh, GFS, you have this big upper air trough that starts to form in the eastern state, in the uh, Great Lakes. So I think we have to watch that. We also have this very strong upper ridge now going into the Pacific. So this this has something that I think we have to just keep to keep our eyes on and see how the models evolve. And then beyond that. We do have this rather cold look in the upper air with the flow coming from northern Canada down into the northeast. And now we're into about February 2nd or 3rd. There's some troughing coming into the uh, uh, Great Lakes there that we'll have to watch. And then after that, I think it's going to depend on whether this vortex here holds in eastern Canada or does it pull out. Because uh, you, 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 there are some models that want to bring the trough back out in the west as we move through February, which then suggests that this cold, this ch change to colder weather is a transient one and is only going to last maybe a week or so or 10 days or whatever it is. And then uh, it goes back to uh, the pattern that we've been seeing, which would favor uh, the west and continue pounding of the west with, with snow and, and, and storms. And here we go. By the way, here's how it looks on the surface. Another big round of rain and snow for California in the southwest. You know, that low uh, is, is coming out now. That's our storm here in the east for, for Sunday night into Tuesday. Uh, still another big storm with heavy snows into California uh, and the west. Uh, that one is going to wind up moving east. And today's runs are a little further. Uh, last night's runs are a little further north with it, but it takes a low across the central plains and on up to the Great Lakes with some snow. And it's behind that system uh, late next week that you start this gradual cool down. And it is going to be a gradual one. Uh, we, we, we've talked about the problems of the fact that there's uh, warm air in Canada initially, so you have to wait for that to cool down. Here's a system for the end of the month that I'm talking about. I and mean, you can see what the model does. It, 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 it has a diver basically coming down into the northern Great Lakes, moving southeastward, and then that low dies out and redevelops off the mid-Atlantic coast. So you we're going to have to watch the positioning of the trough here. If the trough is a little deeper or a little further west, we could wind up, if something like this were to happen literally, it would probably mean uh, the possibility of some some decent snows for, for 
northeastern New England and maybe even down in Boston area. But uh, what happens sometimes with these things is if they are deeper and a little further left, you get the low to dive uh, further to the left. So the development starts instead of starting right southeast of Long Island, the development starts, say, off the Virginia coast. And that gives uh, the area here time. Uh, in terms of uh, when the radar starts to blow up. And you can see on this one, the way it's literally shown, uh, a lot of the precipitation starts getting generated as the low is already going by. So if you've got the low, instead of being here, is somewhere down here as it moves northeast, then you could wind up with a moderate uh, to even in some instances a significant snowfall for the northeast. So I think we have to watch that possibility. And then there's another diver behind that, that the model handles uh, sort of a, 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 an Arctic front that goes through with a shot of very cold air for the first few days of February. And then after that, it moderates, uh, whether that uh, evolves into a, 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 another pattern flip after a short round of cold weather, we'll see. But the bottom line is the, the story is, of course, the uh, nor'easter that we're going to be dealing with uh, for beginning Sunday night into early Tuesday. So uh, just uh, again, the upside is in terms of the storm surge, the uh, storm surge or the tidal surge, that it would suggest two to four feet above normal, which will certainly cause some moderate coastal flooding. Maybe some isolated areas could have more than moderate coastal flooding. But I don't think it's going to be a widespread severe coastal flooding event because of the fact that we are not going into a new moon or a full moon. So we'll keep our fingers crossed on this and we'll see where it goes. And of course, these things fluctuate in terms of our expectations. So we have to be fluid about what we think is going to happen and what we're forecasting. Latest posts on meteorologistjochaffee.com, the app, um, the link is up. Download the app for free. My forecasts and my opinions and analysis, just 99 cents a month for New York, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Hudson Valley, and Eastern Pennsylvania. Have a great rest of your Friday, and we will, of course, keep you up to date on all the goings on with this uh, developing storm for the east uh, over the weekend.